Welcome back to Sound 101. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones, and today we are going to get loud. Stay tuned. You guys have been asking for this episode. You want to know how to mic a drum set. So we brought in master engineer and producer Ty. You best know him as the guy who did Postmodern Jukebox, all those beautiful mixes that they do in their music videos. And we've got Carlo over here. You are a session drummer and a part of Factory Kid, right? Victory Kid. Victory Kid. I f***ed it all up. <laughs> Told you I would. He's going to be doing all that tapping that we love to record. So Ty, this is our setup. We were trying to do something very DIY in the awesome. sense of it's a fake bedroom that we have built. I like it. A lot of people out there, they've got this kind of setup and they want to know one simple question. Hmm. How do you do it? How do you record a drum set? But only three mics. Only three mics. Okay, we can do it. Before you even place a mic or even grab a mic, you have to decide what sound you're going for. Because if you don't know where you're going, then you don't know what to grab. You're talking about genres of music, right? I'm talking about genres of music. I'm talking about how much impact you want the drums to have. In a jazz thing, let's say, uh, the kick drum's not as prevalent. It's not as banging. It's not as impactful. If you want impact, it's going to determine where you're going to put that microphone. So once we figure out what we're trying to do, then we can figure out where we're going to go. Now, we were talking earlier about Sonic Spaces. This mm -hmm. is the space that we happen to be in right now. Now, we have a rug, but do we need to set up any sound blankets? That really depends on the room. Right. So a drum kit in a room is going to reflect, and it's going to get all those reflections going to come back at you. So what we want with drums is we don't want a smearing of sound. That's number one. It doesn't matter the style of music. We don't want it to be hazy. It's like a, a lens that's not quite in focus. If anything, we want phase coherence, so we want everything to hit at the same time to give us impact. Okay. Even if it's a jazz thing where the drums aren't as impactful, the closer the mics come into the drum kit, the more the drum kit is a, it's a drier sound. You remove some of the room. The further away you, you get, you get more of the room. Now, when you say drier sound, you're talking about like you can mic it too close and you end up with that 404 kind of synth sound, right? Sure, like an 808 kind of thing. Double 404, right? Double 404. Double that. I know all about it's the- It's too better. <laughs> it's like just the, like in dialogue. The closer you get, the, the, the chestier it becomes, the more low end you have, the, the proximity effect is increased. Absolutely. So therefore, the closer you come into a source, the more of that source you get. Depending on the pickup pattern of the microphone, that's gonna determine how close we're gonna get in. I usually start with the kick drum because to me, that's the power of the drum kit. And that's gonna define how large of a space sonic space it's going to take up in the recording. So let's talk about this. We're going to start with the bass drum. Let's say we're doing rock and roll, the classic, you know, punk rock kind of sound, three instruments and a singer sure. kind of recording, garage band style music. Okay, so there are a couple of, of approaches. The closer you get into the beater head, which is on this side, the more click you're going to get, the more attack and you would want the click because you're trying to cut through a wall of huge guitars. What I like to do sometimes, if I want more of the click, I would stick it inside. I'll literally just lay it down on a blanket. Most drummers, right they usually yeah. put a blanket or a t-shirt or something inside. So you just lay it inside and get it close to the beater head. And you would pull it in and out depending on how much click you want. That's one way. Another way we can do it is we can stick it right into the hole. Right outside the hole or in the hole? Depends on the size of the kick drum and the size of the hole and the guy's foot. If you want more of a larger end, more bass heavy, more air movement kind of thing, then we would come out closer to the resonator head. Okay. If a guy's kind of feathering the kick drum, he's not moving as much air, right? So you can kind of come in a little closer. Cool, so let's actually mic that up. Which of our microphones would you like to use? The tighter the pattern, the more proximity effect you're gonna get. Okay. So it depends on the low end you want. If you're trying to get the sound of a, of a large kick drum, and you want it to be nice and round and, and big, more of a Bonham-esque type of thing, you'd go with a wider pattern because you're just picking up a lot of that, right? So to answer your question, let's go with a super. Okay. We can go kind of right here. Okay. And actually we can listen to both. Don't forget to cut all this in post. We got our levels set. We got one inside. And then the other one we've got miking a little bit outside the hole to get Correct. the poof of air. Correct. Uh, and let's do a little A-B test. I'll hit record here. 
And you guys at home now can actually listen to this A-B test. Carlo, let's give it a couple of kicks. So there you go. What you guys heard at home was an A and a B. Which one did you like? Because it sounds a lot like this is gonna come down to preference, right? It's absolutely gonna come down to preference and I'll give you a bonus tip. Use them both. If you're doing a rock thing, again, you want clarity in the kick drum, you want impact, gives you the tone. You can put them up 50-50, you can pull one back or forth in the mix, it doesn't really matter. Cool. So which instrument do you like to work with next in the drum kit? The next thing I like to do is the snare. Okay, that's uh, that one. That's gonna be that guy right there. I know that. I learned it earlier. So we're gonna mic up the snare. How do you like to mic up the snare? Again, it depends on the snare, depends on the player, it depends on the style of music. So with that said, we're still staying with the rock thing. Okay. Correct. The hardest thing to get right is to get the snare on its own. Because the snare lives right next to the, to the hi-hat. And that hi-hat has a, a funny way of getting into every microphone that ever was created. It just go everywhere. Okay. So what you're trying to do is you try to, to not eliminate, but we want to minimize the bleed from the hi-hat into the snare. Because what happens is if you have a lot of hi-hat in your snare, if you want to brighten that snare up in post, when you come to the mix, up the hi -hat. you brighten up the hi-hat. So you're just adding hi-hat. So what I like to do is I try to get a really tight pattern microphone, as tight as I can, with the largest null point in the rear, and I'm going to place the microphone so that I'm trying to, to eliminate that hat and get all snare. So with that in mind, we want the tightest pattern mic we have available. That would actually be the new uni mic. So yeah, mic it all up, go, okay, go crazy, great. go wherever you want. And I'm gonna give you guys a tip. Never ask a drummer to move anything on their drum kit so that you can place a microphone. But aren't we in charge? No, we're not in charge. The musicians are in charge because nobody's ever gonna buy a record based on the engineering. They're gonna buy the record based on the performance. And if this guy plays amazing, which he does, you can record him on an iPhone and people will wanna hear it. So that's the best tip I can give you as a working pro is to stay out of the way. Capture what they do. Well, uh, we got to keep moving forward. We got to set up one more mic. So what is that last mic? In most rock music, we're going to have a lot of, usually there's a lot of toms being played. However, we only have one more mic and we can't close mic each individual tom. The overhead really needs to take a snapshot. It needs to take a selfie of this entire, of everything here. So if we've got the kick drum taken care of, and we've got the snare taken care of, and we know that the hi-hat is gonna, bleed. It's gonna go everywhere, yeah. I'll ask the drummer if they will be playing a lot of ride. Ride is? This is the ride. There we go. That's because if it's, a, if it's a, a song or a track that doesn't have a lot of that, or they're only hitting it here every so often, then I'm not gonna concentrate on that. Because again, I'm making a, I'm making a concession here of where I'm gonna go with mm -hmm. it. So I'm gonna ask, number one, are there a lot of toms in this? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. So I know that I need to cover the toms. Is there going to be a lot of ride in this? Probably not. Probably not. Okay, so I'll cheat towards the tom a little bit. Okay. Are you going to be hitting this crash a lot? A little, little bit. Okay, so I know I can favor the toms over the hardware, or the, uh, the brass. So your overheads all play with ratios. Correct. Proximity to which instruments to wear and really kind of figuring that out, triangulating and going, that's the best optimal position that I think for this Correct. Song. So Ty, we're over here at the mic car. What microphone are we gonna grab for those? What I like to do is if it's a really nice studio and you've got a nice acoustic room with big high ceilings and, and it's nice and natural, then I would go with an Omni, something very wide because you wanna capture the sound of the room, the sound of the drum kit in that specific room. Conversely, this room is, it's a small room, but it's got some nice um, things in here that are gonna break it up. So let's experiment. Let's go with a wider pattern. Okay. A lot of you guys are thinking, well, how come I'm not coming in over the top here? Yeah, you said overhead, and this feels more like uh, slightly overhead. It's slightly overhead. Because we've got an Omni mic here, it's picking up everything. It's going to pick up reflections off the wall. It's going to pick up this air conditioning unit here. It's going to pick up the traffic. It's going to pick up everything. The further up we go, the more symbols we're going to get, the more tone we're going to get, but the less low end we're going to get because of the proximity. The lower I go to the, to the ground, the more bass buildup there will be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower it, shoot it right across the drum kit this way, 
Mm -hmm. So I can grab some of the toms. It's gonna grab that tom. It's gonna grab a little bit of everything. It's certainly gonna grab all the brass. So we're gonna start here and see what we get. Okay. Okay. So I'm taking a guess right now in the room based on experience that I think it's gonna sound good back here. And I think if you guys start back here, you'll usually find decent results. However, you might find it better on that side. You might find it better over here. Again, it depends on the drum kit in the room. Before you choose this exact spot, because you're gonna end up in, the, you may end up in somewhere else, have the drummer play for a, a minute and just walk around the kit. So stick your finger in an ear and walk around. Check your other ear because your response is gonna be different in both ears. And listen for balance of, of everything. And when you find the balanced spot, the sweet spot, when you can hear everything nice and clear, that's where the microphone should go. Sounds good. So yeah, let's actually hit a little bit of record so that you guys at home can actually hear what this drum kit now sounds like with our three mics setup that Ty has masterfully placed for us. Carlo, take it away. Well, I heard it. I know you guys definitely heard that. I don't know what you guys think, but you gotta leave those comments down in the section below and tell us what you think. The best comment is going to win an S-Mic2S, that microphone we're using right now for the kick drum. I do wanna thank Ty, who is a master engineer and producer for joining us today, teaching thank us you. all about what we really need to go and think about placing microphones on a drum kit. It's a lot more intense than I think I originally ever thought. I always thought like, oh, you just put two on top and you're done. Well, you can do that too, but you might not like what you get. And I also want to thank Carlo. You are a wonderful session player, and that is probably why you are part of a wonderful band called Victory Kid. Go check them out on social media. I'm Andrew from Dean Microphones, and thank you for watching. <laughs>